benefit of mankind. To give the complete message. That don't only focus on one aspect of life, don't only worship, focus on your worshipping God, but you must also focus on how to deal with the creation. You must also focus on how to deal with the people that are around you. How to be kind to people. How to be loving to people. How to be passionate towards people. How to care for other people. Without caring for other people, what's going to happen to you? The Prophet, peace be upon him, was so complete in this actual form of education that he was a walking, talking role model of what good characters were. People would walk and they would look at the Prophet and they would say, this man is a man of good character without him even having to say one word. This was his message. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Qalam, He says, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The O Prophet, one of the greatest tools that you have is your good character. This is your most powerful tool. And as long as the people that stay after you, that come after you, they hold on to this tool right here, the people will be successful. Few words, actions will conquer the hearts. Few words, but actions will conquer their hearts. And this is exactly what the Prophet did when he came to Mecca. There were very few lectures. Very few. Actually, there were no lectures. Why? Because the people had oppressed the Muslims and the Prophet, peace be upon them, to the point where they couldn't even publicly voice themselves. But how was it that yet, even though they couldn't publicly voice themselves, many people were accepting Islam? It's because the character, the conduct, the approach of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was an approach of mercy. He was a mercy to all mankind. His character was complete. And his character and his mercy combined together would conquer hearts and rock solid hearts would melt down in front of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Stories can start and I'll never end, I promise on that. And this isn't just a claim, da'wah bila dalil batil as you say in Arabic, that a claim without a proof is useless. This isn't a claim without proof. I can start and I promise stories can carry on. One story after the other, one story after the other, that the companions say that we accepted Islam, not because of any lecture, we accepted Islam due to seeing the mercy of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet is returning from a battle. And while he's returning from this battle, here's an incident for you, an example. The Prophet is returning from a battle, and he's with the companions, and it's, the, it's, 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 it's in the blazing heat of Arabia. And it's so hot that the Prophet tells the companions that there's some trees here. Everyone, take your shade under your tree and get some rest. So the companions, they disperse, they find their little shades, they lie down, they're getting some rest. And the Prophet says when the sun goes down and it cools down, that's when we'll start our trip again. So the Prophet himself, he lies down under one tree. And there's a branch that's hanging over the Prophet, so the Prophet takes his sword, and he puts it on the branch. He hangs it on the branch. He's lying down. There's a sword that's hanging there. There's no one close to him because everyone is lying in their own shades. When all of a sudden a person comes who had craved and dreamed of killing the Prophet, peace be upon him. So he comes to the Prophet and he realizes, that, look, everyone's sleeping here. He's lying there and the weapon's right there. You know, it's not going to get any easier than this. So he sneaks up to the Prophet. He pulls the sword out. He withdraws the sword and puts it right at his neck. Right. And he's pointing it there. The Prophet wakes up. Wow, Booth Karawai. It's this ghost standing on top of me with a sword right here. So he says to the Prophet, That may Yasimukamini. That who's gonna save you from me today? So the Prophet's looking at this guy and he has this neck, you know, sword right to his neck, and he's and he's saying, Who's gonna save you from me today? And the Prophet's looking and he says, Well, if you really want to know who's gonna save me from you today, Allah, God is gonna save me. And as soon as the Prophet says Allah, this person trembles, he falls on the ground, and the sword is lying there. The Prophet then gently gets up, picks up that sword, and puts it to his neck. And he says, let me ask you the very same question, who's going to save you from me today? So the person standing there, he's lying on the ground, he's looking at the Prophet, and he's shocked that just two seconds ago the ball was in my court, now this, guy, now this guy's going to slam dunk on me. So who's going to save you from me? So then he says that I don't believe in God. So I can't say God. But what I do believe in, and I know for a fact, is that your mercy is going to save me today. And the Prophet says, Check me, you got me. Get up and go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records this incident in the Quran by saying, Wallahu ya'asimu kamin nas That when it comes to safeguarding you, O Prophet, none other than Allah will safeguard you from every difficulty that comes in your life. And this man, when he stands up, he didn't just walk away like you and I. After the reality or truth comes in front of us, we like walking away. He didn't just stop and walk away, but he turned around to say a to- to give a token of thanks. And his token of his token of thanks was accepting the reality that showed him the result that he just saw right now. And he says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. I testify there is no God but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a servant and messenger of God Almighty. 
One example. Another example. The Prophet is in the early days of his prophethood. He's still in Mecca. In the early days of prophethood, everyone had a lot of bad things to say about the Prophet. The reason why they had bad things to say about the Prophet is because these people were very culture oriented. And these people were very strong on their culture. And their culture was to worship hundreds of idols. They would worship anything that came in front of them. One of the companions, he says that before I accepted Islam, I remember traveling. And while I was traveling, I, I, I couldn't carry the idol with me because it was so big. So I decided to, and I, when I was traveling, I realized that I had to worship something, but I didn't have anything to worship. So he says that I pulled out a date and I started worshiping the date. He started worshiping the small kajur, date. And then he realized that when, the, when, the, when, when, when he was traveling and all of his food finished, this was Umar radiallahu anh, one of the companions, he says this story. He says, when I realized that I was traveling and all my food finished and the only thing I had left to eat was a date, he looked at his God, he's like, I gotta eat you now. <laughs> and he tore it into two pieces and he had that. And then he realized that the only thing that remained was the seed of the date, so they started worshipping the seed of the date. Until a point came that he became so hungry and there was no food left that he actually had to eat that too. So he said, I'm going to have to take a little break on worshipping. And he crushes that seed and he eats it. So these people were crazy over worshipping their idols. They were crazy over worshipping things. They would just get, they would get a, a camel and make a urinate on a pile of soil and they'd worship that pile of soil because the urine of the camel was on there. They had everything that they wanted to worship, they would worship it. But the Prophet came with a message that didn't allow them to worship anything they wanted to worship. The Prophet's message was that you can't worship what you want to worship. You must worship what you were created to worship. And you were created to worship your God, your Lord, one Allah. Unity. One worship. One God. You must worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet... Now because uh, there were two groups of people. The first group of people are saying that we worship one God. Second group of people say no, we worship multiple gods, polytheists. Right? Monotheism, polytheism. They're, they're, they're going back and forth. And what happens is people are very, some people are very, they lack intolerance to other people's opinions. So what happens is this big division comes, arguments, fights, wars, torture, breaking of culture, breaking of community. The unity these people had was not on there. So there's this lady, she becomes so upset and so depressed with the situation of Mecca. She thinks to herself that never before had I seen this in Mecca and today now I see the day that Mecca breaks into two because of a new religion. So she packs up all of her bags, she's like, you know what, I'm leaving Mecca. I'm tired of this. I'm actually going to go outside Mecca. I'm tired of Muhammad, I'm tired of Mecca, I'm tired of Islam, I'm just leaving. I don't want to even see the people of Mecca. So while she's leaving, she packs up all of her baggage and she needs help carrying her baggage. So she's waiting that someone's going to come, they call him a Hamad. Hamad in Arabic is a person who carries luggage. Right? So she's waiting for someone to come and help her carry her luggage. She's waiting, 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 no one comes. Until finally a young man comes. She tells the young man that I need help carrying my luggage. The young man says, okay, let's go. Picks up the luggage, starts walking with her. Now while they're walking, she's like, oh, you're such a young guy. She's such an, you're such an amazing guy. I've been standing here all day waiting for a person to come carry my luggage. No one comes. I'm waiting. No one comes. I'm waiting. And finally you come. You're such an amazing person. She's like, you know what? As a young man, you have a long life ahead of you. You have a lot to conquer in life. I just want to give you one piece of advice that's going to save you from being a failure. What's that piece of advice? She tells a young man that make sure you stay away from Muhammad. Don't go anywhere near him. This guy will take you away and he'll turn a gem into a, into a clot of soil. If you're going to be wasted in life. Just stay away from him and you'll be set. So the young man says, okay, sounds good. No, let's keep walking. They're walking, walking, walking until finally they reach the destination. Young man lowers her luggage. He says, okay, nice meeting you. Have a nice day. Before he leaves, the, the lady says, you know what, before you go, why don't you tell me who you are so I can stand on the mountain of Mecca? And shout out to the people there, the old people of Mecca. You're fighting over small petty things. Everyone's claiming to be honorable. Everyone's claiming to have status. Everyone's claiming that they have etiquettes of life. Everyone's claiming that they know what the reality of, and the truth behind the purpose of creation is. All of you are making these crazy claims, but you guys lack in the basic principles of life. Why are you going on academic discussions and discussing the highest point when you lack in the basic you know, principles of life? Why are you trying to fill a cup and the cup has a million holes in it? She says to the people, you know, before you go on and you go on your very far along battles for religion, why don't you guys come to this young man here and learn a basic class. Take, you know, etiquettes of life 101 with him. Learn the basics of life first before you go into your lengthy discussions. So she says, oh young man, what's your name? Tell me I'm going to get on this mountain and I'm going to scream like an old lady knows how to scream. He says, well if you want to know my name, my name is Muhammad. She says, okay, stop, stop, stop. I'm getting old, can't hear anymore. Hearing gates falling out of place. What's your name again? Yeah, my name is Muhammad. She's shocked. The man who she ran from was the man who she fell onto. And what's her response? Ashhadu Allah.